Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Bella, and for this week's video, we're going to be doing a soft girl makeup look inspired by K-pop and Doja Cat's iconic Planet Her music video. The stars of today's show are these water-activated liners and these two eyeshadow palettes that I got from ColourPop. For skin prep, we're starting with this toner by Isntree and this moisturizing gel cream by Verst, which is my favorite. Don't forget your neck. Lastly, for SPF, I'm going in with the Isentree Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel. It's my absolute favorite SPF, especially when my skin is feeling a little bit more dry and dehydrated, which has been basically almost every day these days. It leaves no white cast, which is perfect for when I'm doing makeup. Since I have oily skin, I spray setting spray after my skincare to make my makeup last longer. Then I blot my T-zone a bit to absorb excess moisture. To start off this graphic liner look, I'm creating little dots for where I want my liner to start and end. Then I'm going in with concealer in the inner and outer corners of my eyes. This is the Cossus Revealer Concealer in the shade 5.5. And I'm concealing these dark areas so that they don't interfere as much with my makeup and liner application later on. Here I'm just lightly tapping the concealer in place. And with what's left on the brush, I bring that little bit of pigment onto my eyelids. Now I do the same thing for the other side, just lightly tapping and blending the concealer in place. I want the dark areas around my eyes to be concealed, but I don't want creasing, so we're just being very conservative with our concealer right now. Now I'm going in with Mint Macaron, and I'm just thinking about connecting the two dots that I made earlier in a kind of Count Olaf eyebrow shape, I guess. And I'm gradually thickening the line as I go. If I ever run out of pigment, I just dip my brush back into the pot so that I can complete the line. Now I'm working on thickening what I just drew, especially towards the center, because I want the edges, the outer and inner edges, to still be tapered and sharp looking. Oops. I'm just trying to make it as even as possible. Now I'm sharpening the inner corner and extending it a bit. Then I can clean up whatever mistakes I made with a Q-tip. It's really handy to have these by you when you're doing graphic looks like this. Then we do the same thing on the other side. I always find that the second side that I do is so much harder to do than the first because you kind of have to match how it looks to the first liner that you did, but we're gonna do our best. So we're trying to recreate the same Count Olaf eyebrow shape that's thicker towards the center and tapered towards the inner and outer edges. And I'm just filling in the shape slowly as I did a while ago. When I do liner looks like this, I make sure that there are no gaps or breaks in the pigment that I'm applying so that the liner looks as clean and as smooth as possible. And here I'm just extending that curve a bit because I think it lacked it and cleaning it up with a Q-tip. Since after cleaning it up, the line isn't as sharp as I want it to be, I'm going in again and redrawing the line so that it matches the other side. And again, we're sharpening the inner corner. If some of the wet liner gets onto your eyelid, just like it usually does for me, you just need to reach for a clean Q-tip and you can gently wipe it away. Next, I'm gonna go into Taro Milk Tea, which is a really cute, pastel lavender shade and I'm going to create an ombre effect starting with the outer corners and then blending into the teal shade towards the center. Whenever I layer liner colors like this and I want to achieve an ombre effect, I make sure that the second layer of color that I'm applying has a little bit more water in it just so that it's sheer so it blends in with the base color and also 
so that it doesn't crack as much. I notice that when the pigment is too thick, it tends to crack when I make facial expressions, so I want to prevent that if possible. Now I'm continuing to layer on taro milk tea as much as I think is needed and I am doing so really carefully so that I don't ruin the shape that I've already made. And I try to make sure that there are no gaps in color so that everything looks even and smooth. Now we're going to repeat the same thing on the other side, just applying a slightly sheer layer of the pastel lavender color and coloring in between the lines as much as possible. Just sharpening and cleaning up as we go. I'd say the inner corners of this liner look are much harder to do than the outer corners because I feel like I'm getting dulling or cross-eyed while doing the inner corners. The nice thing about these detail brushes that I got from Hue Obsession is that they have a bent neck, so I can still see what I'm doing even as I'm painting the liner onto my eyelid. Now that we've added the ombre effect, I'm going to go in and start creating the dotted pattern on top of the ombre that I just did. And I'm just doing tiny, tiny dots and trying to keep the shape as controlled as possible, which is actually really hard because my hands are really shaking. If you have shaky hands like me, holding the brush closer to the tip is helpful for getting more control. I'm kind of scared. <laughs> I'm taking a deep breath just because I'm so nervous. I think tiny details are really nice to have in a liner look like this, even if people might not see it from afar. I can see it in the mirror, so even if it's harder to do, I still like to do these little details. Hooray! The second part of this look is fox eyeliner. I have a hard time doing this eyeliner look just because my tear ducts are partially hidden, meaning it's kind of hard to connect the liner with the tear duct because it, it's not seen. So I just make sure to keep the shape as fluid and sharp as possible to make up for my partially hidden tear duct. But hey, you learn to work with what you got, right? It was a bit finicky at first, but I finally learned how to do fox liner. Next, we're going to wing it out with the taro milk tea shade. This is something that I'm much more used to than the inner corner liner because I love to do winged looks a lot. And my tip is really just to follow the natural line of your eye. And I, I know I'm looking down right now, but the best thing is to look straight ahead so that you're not deforming the liner shape and it'll suddenly look different when you look up or look forward. I think those are some of the most helpful tips that I learned from watching Robert Welsh videos. I used to do my liner completely different and I didn't realize that I was doing it wrong, but after watching his videos, I finally learned the right way to do liner. So you live and you learn. Now I'm just doing the same thing that I did on the other side and I'm just making sure to bring the liner as close to my lash line as possible since I want the entire look to be continuous and clean and sharp. Now that that's done, I want to balance out the dots that I drew earlier on top of my eyelid with more dots under my eye. And I'm going to do purple on one side and teal on the other side so that we use each color equally and so everything is balanced. It's so much easier drawing dots under my eye than it was a while ago. So I'm a little bit more confident and having the really fine tipped brush helps a lot too. 
you can see that I'm holding the brush really close to its tip so that I have a lot more control when I draw tiny details like this. And it matches my nails. Isn't that cute? Now we're dipping into some eyeshadows. I'm starting off with Mojito Mommy from the Meant to Be Eyeshadow Palette by Colourpop. And I'm patting most of the pigment and the shimmer onto the center of my lid. Then I'm blending it outwards towards the outer edge of my eye and also towards the inner edge so that I get a nice diffused eyeshadow look. Then we're going to repeat the same technique on the other side, starting from the center and diffusing the pigment outwards and towards the inner corner of the eye. I'm a sucker for anything shimmery, whether it's eyeshadow or highlighter, so for me, a look isn't complete without something glittery. I'm going in with a second shimmery shade now, which is Fluff from the Lilac You A Lot palette by Colourpop again. It's a nice warm violet shade that not only matches my backdrop, but also adds dimension to my eye because it is a lot darker than the green shade that I already have on my lid. So adding just a little bit of that violet shade creates more dimension and makes my eyes look more 3D. Next, I'm going in with Merm Liner in the shade Happy Unicorn by Mermaid Beauty. I'm using this to line my bottom waterline to make sure that this part of my eyes also ties in with the rest of my look. And it's a nice, comfortable formula that's super easy to apply. Next, for my upper waterline, I'm going to go in with the waxy end of the Issy & Co Eyeliner Duo in Dark Brown. I want to use black mascara to make sure that my lashes really pop against this liner and shadow. So I want to tie that in with the rest of the look so it doesn't look too out of place, which is why I'm using a dark brown liner for this part of my eye. I curled my lashes off camera because I wanted to talk a little bit more about mascara technique. I'm using my favorite mascara, which is the Lash Perm Curl Fix Mascara by Etude House. And I'm using black today, so it pops against the liner and eyeshadow more. But you can see that I'm really wiggling the wand close to the base of my lashes, so that it also kind of thickens the lash line a bit, without you having to apply another layer of eyeliner. And I'm just working the product upwards and curling the lash as I go so that it really keeps the shape that I've worked hard to get. I also like the curved wand shape because it helps you get into the corners of your eye. Since I'm not applying false lashes today, I'm going in with another coat of another mascara that I really like, which is the one by Happy Skin. And I like to apply this on the tips of my lashes because it makes them look feathery and long without making them look heavy. And I think applying mascara to your bottom lashes is really important too because it opens up your eye a lot. It's a little bit finicky, but it's worth it. And here's the finished look. I did my base off camera because it's the usual one that I do. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye!